So, I wanted to do a quick documentary on the mass shooting that we had down here in Dayton, Ohio, in the Oregon district in August a few years back. Uh, Connor Betts came down here and he killed eight people in the Oregon district that were just out, you know, enjoying the the history of this area. But I wanted to walk his path and try and match it up with some of the video that we have uh, where he came and he did this. So I'm going to start up here at Jay's Seafood in the parking lot where Counter Bets parked uh, with his sister and her friend. And uh, they set out to do a night of just, you know, partying down here, having some fun in the Oregon district. But I'm going to start where he parked at. I'm going to walk his path to where he did the killings. And then uh, our police force were able to uh, shoot him 56 times. He only got to fire. He only was only able to fire for 30 seconds. And our uh, Dayton police caught up with him. He parked in this spot right here, which is a little bit different now because they got the automated, but he was right on the other side right there. He parked his, it was like a 2008 Toyota Corolla. And there's video you can see. You can see the gunman, Connor Betts, arriving at Ned Pepper's bar. Of course, he would later come back. Then seen walking after going to his car, changing his clothes, and then carrying a heavy backpack. He ducks into an alley and puts on body armor. It was not long after he emerged from that alley, the shooting began, and this number tonight, 26 people shot in just 32 seconds. Among the dead, his own sister, the ABC's Eva Pilgrim, leading us off. Tonight, nine days after a gunman killed nine people in downtown Dayton, officials using never-before-seen surveillance images and videos piecing together the most detailed timeline yet of Connor Betts' deadly rampage. <laughs> Authorities say Connor Betts got to the area around 11 the night of the shooting. You see in this surveillance video him arriving with his sibling and a friend, the three going to Blind Bob's bar. So, Andy, are you worried that won't come down to the Oregon district or that it's going to change down here? I don't want people to let the shooting define what the Oregon district is and I don't think they will. Uh, we've been through a lot of unavoidable disasters, you know, going back to the Dayton flood in 1913 and uh, other avoidable disasters, uh, which I think this one could have been. Uh, we're known for culture and history going back to the 19th century and we're going to keep building on that, no matter what people do. Thanks a lot. Then, at 12.13, Betts leaves his sister and friend at Blind Bob's and goes to Ned Pepper's across the street. He's there for 30 minutes before going back to his car, where cameras capture him changing. He stood behind the bars for nine minutes. Then, just after 1 a.m., he comes around a corner, gun in hand. Just after 1 a.m., the terror began. We believe that the shooting started at approximately 1.05 and 35 seconds. We believe it ended uh, at 1.06 and 7 seconds. That's 32 seconds. Police, quick, responding to the scene in 15 seconds, taking him down in the doorway to Ned Pepper's. The aftermath? More than a dozen taken to the hospital, nine people were killed, including the shooter's own sister. Tonight, investigators saying Betts was in contact with his sister throughout the night, even calling her at one point. As to whether or not he shot her deliberately? Some are saying absolutely not. He, he was not intentional. Some saying no, it had to be. I would say it's inconclusive. And Eva Pilgrim back with us on this again tonight. And today we were listening as police revealed that he'd actually been there the night before, but they still haven't revealed a motive of any kind. That's right, David. Police tell us they think Connor Betts planned this shooting, and they think he acted alone, saying he was in that area the night before the shooting as well tonight. They're trying to figure out how long he'd been planning this actual attack. David. All right, Eva, thank you. See them walking right past this and into this alley that I just came from. They all three 
came back, came down this alley, and they went to Blind Bob's at first. There's video of him going into Blind Bob's. Then they went over to uh, the, the girl. They went into Ned Pepper's, but then he came back out. He left his sister and a friend there. He came back out and came down the back down his alley, back over to where his car was, and he got his ammunition. He loaded up with his uh, backpack with you know his his, uh, his guns and his ammunition. He didn't. He had it in his backpack, and there's video of him walking back down this alley and then back through to uh, where his car was, and then back up. I actually did an interview with the uh, Washington Post. And you're a Dayton resident? Yes. Okay, can you tell me your thoughts on what happened? What, what, where were you at? What, what's going on? I was at home, actually, but we usually do come down through here quite a bit because, uh, you know, this is like a place, uh, usually a safe place to, to have a few drinks and get something to eat and enjoy some music. And when I heard about it this morning, I came down here to see if I could uh, see what's going on and get some coverage for my YouTube channel. Do you know anybody that's a... Uh... I don't, I don't know yet. Right. Uh, what is your thoughts? We had a shooting yesterday in Texas. We got a shooting today. What is your thoughts on the whole violence? Uh, I think a lot of times uh, you have copycats because, you know, the Garlic Festival, we had that, and then we have this here, and also with the two recent hot car deaths that we've had, you have copycat stuff that goes on, and people get their ideas from what someone else has previously done. That's what they do. There's nothing you can do about a crazy person with a gun. I know you got people on both sides. You got one side saying they just need to ban guns, and the other side that says we need some kind of you know legislation. And you got people to say you shouldn't touch our First Amendment or our Second Amendment rights. Wait, what, what do you say to that? Well, right? when people say that you should ban guns, it goes back to me. It goes back to 1991 and the Killeen, the Luby shooting there, where the lady uh, was under the table, had to watch her parents get shot, and she followed the law and left her gun in the car. I forget her name, she does a lot of leg legislation, but she could have stopped that guy because she had the shot in her. If her gun was in her purse and not in her glove box, she could have saved some more people. There was 23 killed there. Yeah. All right, that's good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, the morning after, the bodies were still laying over there. And uh, I did an uh, interview with the Washington Post. It's on YouTube, Ohio Star. Right over there. I have my press pass and everything. So, But anyways, he came... They came back now through this alley right here. And there's also a video of him. You know, you, I'll, I'll try and match it up. But he comes down this alley right here. This is where the walk started, the glare of the sun. Bright and early here in Dayton, Ohio. And I'm trying to keep myself occupied. I just had surgery yesterday. Uh, I got a stent in my kidney. And they took a 10 millimeter kidney stone out. So I'm trying to stay active. It, it, it hurts, but anyways, he walks up. They walk up through here, and you can see, there's clearly video of them walking up through here. And he gets about right here. This is where the yeah, Connor Betts gets. Am I in the right spot? I think so. No, I'm not in the right spot. Anyways, they walked up through here, and he gets behind this other building. <laughs> There's video from one of these cameras around here has got him. I don't know which camera it's all, but I think it's the one up here. But anyways, he comes down this alley. I'm trying to figure out where it is. It's probably one of those cameras over there. There's one from one of these houses. But anyways, he gets right here. Right here, yeah, now there's the doorway. But he gets right here and he sets his backpack down. And he, this is where he loads up his, his weapons. Loads everything up, gets it all going. It comes around this corner, fully loaded. Comes down this small alleyway. Sorry about the glare. There's people sitting out here eating and everything else. Comes down this small alleyway right here. The people have, and see those two cameras up there. This is what catches him coming down the alley right here. It's, it's video. But when he gets about. He didn't start firing right here, even though there were people in here that were eating. They were out in this thing. He waited till he got to the end right here. The people did see him, 
with the weapons, but he didn't fire at them while they were in here. He did not fire at those people. He, he could have. But he comes around this corner right here. We got to the end of the line, which is near the corner. You heard one gunshot. You heard boom. So we looking around. We didn't know what it was. It didn't sound like a familiar sound. And the buildings around here made it kind of echo off. And then you hear a second boom. And then after that, it's complete rapid fire. Oh, f taco stand sitting right here the first thing he does is he kills two people right here at the taco stand boom boom all these people start running back in here and then he starts to make his way across the street I'll wait for a car but he comes out right here and then he makes his way he fires and kills two people right here and then he makes his way Across the street, I'm going for this car. Then he makes his way across the street right here. I'm waiting for this really good looking dog to walk by. All right. So he makes his way across the street right here and he's, he's, he's firing over into this area right here. He's firing over into this area. I'll show you some of the bullet here. But there are people on this sidewalk. Uh, this is where he kills. I will get the, the names of the victims. I had it once before. But shooting people right here, right here, two dead bodies up here. He's coming down through this way, firing. And um, uh, the first one is Lois Oglesby, O-G-L-E-S-B-Y. Black female, 27. The second one is Megan Betts, B-E-T-T-S, white female, 22. Saeed Saleh, S-A-L-E-H, black male, 38. Derek Fudge, black male, 57. Logan Turner, white male, 30. Nicholas Coomer, C-U-M-M-E-R, white male, 25. Thomas McNichols, M-C-N-I-C-H-O-L-S, black male, 25. Beatrice Warren Curtis, black female, 36. And Monica Brickhouse, black female, 39. Those are the nine names of the individuals who were uh, killed overnight. All right. The first time I came down here, which is not on YouTube anymore, but the first time I came down here, there was a guy laying right here, and there was a lady laying right, right here with her head over the curb, right there. And there was some other people that were down through here too, and I'll get their names. But anyways, as he's coming, as he's coming down through here, he's coming this way. Our Dayton Police Department was sitting right there on the other side. I'll show you. They came around through here, through here. And Connor Betts, you can see in the video, he makes his way right here. He's trying to get into Ned Peppers, right? But he makes his way right here. The cops are standing right over there on that corner right there, and they fire at him. And, and he died right here. They got him right here. Now, it used to have a sign that said Dayton Strong there. They took it down. That's okay. But, uh, if he would have got inside of Ned Peppers, I don't know how well we could see in there, but it is an open, like an open floor, and most of the bar is around the edges of it. If he would have got in here, there were people just everywhere. If he would have got in here, they would have, uh, they would have been really bad. Looking for bullet holes. One right there. Yeah, but they killed him right here. That's where Connor Betts 
looking for this. They're, they're, I know there's bullet holes because I saw them before unless they patched them up. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah, see them over there. See them up against the side of the wall. One, two, they patched them up. A couple more right there. One there. One there. And in my first video, this is when they first opened up this. Uh, our uh, weed shop. Our weed shop. And they used to have a picture of a marijuana leaf right here. They had a bullet hole right through the middle of it. I don't know if there's any more down this way. But at any rate, that's where they got him. And I'll go back. I'll go back to the. Uh, this is where they killed Connor Betts at. So the whole thing, you know, as he came down through here and they got him right here. So he, he came across right here, down this way. You can see in the video where he turns this corner right here and our cops killed him. And right here it says, you won't do it. <laughs> this is what the area looked like before. Now you can see people running back into here. But anyways, our police, when he started the shooting, our police usually stay posted back here because there's a lot of people. Well, they were sitting, his cruiser was sitting right here when he heard the when he heard the shooting. So you can see them come around right here. There's one officer standing right here. There's another officer right here. He fires a couple rounds. And there's another one that went around the car. It went around the car and was trying to get him as he came across the street. But you can see that two officers firing from right here. And then another one going around right there. So they 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 they, they got him. He only he was only able to get off. Uh, he only was able to shoot for like 30 seconds. And he said the police killed him right over here. This is where they got him. This is where they got him. And then Dave Chappelle, he did a concert down the street here for us. And I also got some of that. He brought Stevie Wonder out here and. Uh, Stewart, Chance the Rapper, and there's my lovely chariot waiting on me. But I just wanted, since I was down here, I just wanted to remember it. it happened in the month of August. I want to put it back up on YouTube, get a good look at uh, what Oregon District looks like now. Uh, the victims' names used to be up there. I'm surprised they took them to come out. But this is like a little Bourbon Street, except for that. That shouldn't be like that. Anyways, I just wanted to do a quick little thing on that. 